Turning now to our top story, and Tony Abbott has given his national security statement at the Federal Police Headquarters in Canberra, where he warned the terrorist threat is worsening. Well, Dr John Blacksland is a senior fellow at the Strategic and Defence Studies Centre at the Australian National University. He joins us live now from Canberra to talk about what's gone on today. John Blacksland, thanks very much Please for your come. time this evening to put to you the question you pose in your opinion piece you wrote for The Drum today. How cynical is the government's latest efforts to reset the national security agenda? Well, look, it's, it's a rhetorical question, really, because the situation that we face today is a complicated one, uh, and the, the government apparatus, I think, rightly has sought to address some of the uh, terrorist concerns, some of the national security concerns, that the paper does a pretty good job of addressing. Uh, it's actually a pretty good uh, a summary of the issues and what we've seen over the last decade or more of reforms, of initiatives to address uh, terrorism in Australia and overseas, and the mechanisms that, are, that have been developed and put in place over the years. And what we've seen is a proposal to make some refinements. Uh, we saw previously we had a national security advisor. We went away from that. We're now talking about having a national counterterrorism coordinator. Well, you know, it's not that much different to what we had before, but we're seeing a call for greater coordination. But it's, of course, the fact that the Prime Minister is making this announcement uh, after a, a, a period of really uh, diabolical uh, media coverage uh, and, uh, you know, missteps along the way, uh, it's understandable that people are going to look at this fairly cynically and say, well, you know, uh, is this all it's cracked up to be? The bottom line is, though, that the report is pretty solid. It makes some reasonable recommendations with a number of safeguards and, and uh, measures in place that I think are pretty positive. And I think the, particularly the measures for countering violent extremism are ones that they are buried late in the back of the report, but I think they're actually probably some of the most significant ones that need to be acted on. Let's look at some of the language that was used in that report, Dr Blacksland. Uh, one area that stood out was uh, at Tony Abbott today saying ensuring foreign fighters who return are prosecuted or closely monitored. Risk, uh, he, he said ensure that foreign fighters are closely monitored. How risky is it to use words like ensure given that the British government has said that it's nearly impossible, next to impossible, to monitor people who return home? Can that be assured to the Australian public that these people can actually be monitored? Are the resources there to do that? Well, that's a very good question, Kumi. The point is, though, that the Australian uh, community's expectation of what the government's uh, police and security authorities can do is sky high. We expect perfection. We expect the authorities to be able to track and monitor and nip things in the bud. And they, to be fair, they've done a pretty good job of that so far. Um, but, you know, to go one notch further to actually improve the standard that the police and security authorities are able to exercise requires a compromise of, of, uh, of, of civil liberties, effectively. Uh, and I'm not sure how much we want to uh, uh, compromise those liberties for uh, additional security measures. It's a debate that needs to be had. It's one that is appropriate that's held in Parliament. Uh, and it's one that this paper sets out the agenda, if you like, for the government uh, and that uh, needs to be really talked through and discussed in detail because there are some significant worries about how this could be interpreted in the community. We've already seen today signs from uh, various uh, leading figures in the Islamic community in Australia who are very concerned about how this is going to be taken. And that means that we really do need to be very circumspect and careful, very measured in the words we use in the actions we take that we don't inflame the situation. Because, of course, when you think about the, the rhetoric and the intentions of be it Al-Qaeda or the so-called Islamic State, what they are wanting to do, I believe, is to goad an overreaction. That's always been the plan, to goad societies to overreact. And, of course, this means that the government, the authorities, the community has to be very measured, very informed, very calibrated and careful about how we respond to the circumstances we face. John, in regard to the possibility of suspending or even revoking citizenship to dual uh, citizens who are involved in terrorism or deemed mm. to be involved, how will making someone potentially stateless deter or combat terrorism? Well, you know, it's really uh, early days. It's hard to know exactly how much that will deter die-hard committed uh, jihadists. 
We've seen people who are making calls, you know, people who are marginalised in society, people who don't seem to uh, be appreciated or feeling that they're, they're not part of them, they're not able to make, uh, uh, make much of themselves, taking uh, extreme courses of action, going overseas, and, and a lot of them uh, thinking that they're going to stay. So maybe it's not going to have that much of a deterrent effect, but hopefully it will be a lever that people can, the authorities, that friends, families, mums, sisters can use to say, hey, Hey, come on, think of us. Let's put this in perspective. Uh, there's no guarantee that it will work, uh, but it's a lever that is, you know, worth I think implementing to see how it uh, how it pans out. Dr. John Blacksland, senior fellow from the Strategic and Defence Studies Centre, we so appreciate your insights and time with us as always. Thanks so Pleasure much.